Fear is simply faith in the wrong thing. It's being fully persuaded of, of the lies, the perversion that Satan has propagated. It's called fear. Faith is being fully persuaded of what God says. And so Satan wants you to be afraid because it takes you out of faith, out of the kingdom's jurisdiction of protection, and allows him to kill, steal, and destroy in your life. So this scripture, he knows this. The Bible says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, notice it says your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, friend, this is something you need to realize. The Bible says your enemy. This is a personal thing. You can come to church all day long, but you know what? You walk out these doors, you need to realize that you have an enemy. You personally have an enemy. Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy in your life. He wants to minimize God's impact, wants to nullify your testimony, and he wants God not to be honored or glorified in anything that you do. He is against God, always against God. Because of God, he's against you. You're made in the image of God. You bear his name. He hates you, and he's going to be against you. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't produce fear in your life because you have all the cards. You have the authority, and you know that you can trample over him. You're not to, you're not to be concerned about him because he lost his authority. He has nothing to, to, to offer you as far as any kind of credibility, except what the Bible says here. It says here in 1 Peter 5, 8, to be alert, sober, your enemy prowls. The word prowl means to stealthily undercover like looking for prey. Think of something looking, you know, sneaking up. He's going to try to, to sneak up on you when you une, unexpectedly expect things to happen. A lion's roar. He's like a roaring lion. Now, I've read this. I've never heard a lion's roar. And I want to ask, has anyone here been on a safari that actually heard in real life a lion roar? Anyone here? Thank you. Yeah. We had, uh, I think we had, what? The zoo. The zoo. Okay. Yeah, well, that's true. But if you're out in the wild with no cage around that thing and it roared, you might think differently, okay? <laughs> but anyway, they say that a lion's roar, if you're in the wild, is the scariest sound in nature. Now, that's just what they say. But anyway, so Satan is roaring like he has that potential. He's going to intimidate you, right? He's going to bark. He's going to yell. He's going to, he's going to scream false things. He's going to make himself bigger than life, right? Right? Come on, say yes. That's what he does. But, uh, you know, you have to know that is a, a roar that cannot harm you. But your enemy is going to roar, and he's going to sound like he has authority. He's going he's to sound like he can hurt you. He's going to remind you of your past. He's going to tell you that you don't have any authority, that the word of God's not going to work. And he's going to bring you into agreement with him. When that happens, friend, the kingdom of God's authority is cut off from your life. Oh, you're going to heaven, but you'll have a rough time here. You'll have a rough time here. All right, so the media just volunteered to be his voice. That's all. The media always volunteers to be his voice. I mean, when's the last time you heard a good, good news report? The media volunteers to broadcast fear. But you have a choice to listen to it and feed on it. If you feed on it, you're going to come into agreement with it. That's how, that's how you're created the spirit of man, what you feed on, you're going to incubate, you're going to meditate on, and you're going to begin to imagine. And that's how, that's how it works. But there's an answer. You say, Pastor, what can I do about it? You need to roar back. When that lion, when that voice roars at you, you need to have an answer for that. You don't go, oh my goodness, you need to answer. No. In the name of Jesus, let me tell you the truth. And you need to have a scripture, God's word, you need to counter it immediately. All right, counter it immediately. So resist the devil. James chapter 4, verse 7, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. How do you resist the devil? Say no. When he tells you a lie, say that's not true. No. And you, tell, you speak back to that. The problem is so many Christians don't know the truth. I mean, uh, you may have seen in the news this week about the seven-year-old just having a, her tonsils removed and died on the operating table. Is anyone, you may have seen this. It was on the news. Seven-year-old, her heart just stopped. Uh, they don't even know why her heart stopped, but she died at seven years of age. Now, that part, you know, that part happened, but the part that troubled me worse, and that's a horrible situation, but the part that caught my attention was the father's response regarding this story. He said, well, the comforting thing is I knew God did it, so I know it was the plan of God, and I have great comfort in that. I'm thinking, my God, if God's against you, who can, who can ever win? 
I mean, why would you want to serve a God like that? Kills your seven-year-old daughter? That's comforting to you? I mean, if there's nothing else out there, man, you're in trouble because what else could there be? If the God that made everything is trying to kill your kids, then we got a problem, right? So people don't know. They don't know that the roar is not true. They don't know what the facts are. They don't know the truth. But the church needs to tell people the truth and demonstrate it. People are waiting for the truth of God. They're waiting to see God's answer. They're waiting to see a good God. They're waiting to see answers for life's problems. But the Bible says if you'll resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Not just back up. He will run in terror. The Greek literally means flee from you because you have the authority. Amen? So how do I resist the devil? I say no. And you counter it with a voice. You, st- you, you, you stop it. You don't pick it up. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that the shield of faith quenches every fiery dart. That fiery dart is a thought. Now, it quenches means it has no impact. And the shield of faith, the shield is held outside your, your body. So it never enters into your, where you live, your, your person. No imagination. It, it's quenched before you pick it up in your thought life. It's quenched before you begin to imagine. It's quenched before you begin to pick up those pictures and begin to imagine what would happen if that happened and that would happen. You began to, no, it stops it. It just stops it out here. It casts it down as something crazy, something not worth the time. It's just like, that's the nuttiest thing I ever heard of in my life. Because you're so convinced of what God says, you walk free from that thought. So how do you resist, resist the devil? You say no. You say no, that's not no. But you got to know what the word says. You got you to know what the word says. You got to know your legal rights. If you're in a court battle today, I guarantee you someone trying to steal your house, you'd probably dig into some law cases to figure out if you have a right to that house or not. You'd probably hire an attorney that knew the law for you, and he'd represent you because you're convinced that this person trying to take your house is wrong, right? But Christians don't do that. They don't know what the Bible says. They don't know this is a legal, com- a legal situation that they need to defend themselves like an attorney in a, ca- in a court case. They go, oh, my goodness, the situation's there, so it must be God. Because he has the power. He's not doing anything. He must have chosen it for me. Friend, this is ignorance. It's just ignorance. And Satan thrives in a place of ignorance. Listen, you have the authority. You have the absolute authority in this thing. In the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Disease has to bow. You need to understand this. You have the authority. Now, you know, here's one thing that we need to talk about. Because you can have the authority, like having a set of keys... Having a set of keys and have the title of that Corvette in your name doesn't mean you'll get to drive it. Because one day you got to sit in that Corvette and turn the key. Now, you can assume, you can reflect on how awesome it is that you own that Corvette, like coming to church and say, praise God, I am a believer and Satan can't touch me. That's good. That's good. You've got the right. You've got the, you got the authority. But if you don't know how to turn the key, it's the same as not having it. And it's horribly if you think that God's against you. But even Christians that know that God is against sickness and disease and has anointed them, and they can quote a scripture if they don't know how to turn and exercise that authority, or if they don't take the time to do it, the effect is the same as not ever having it. Thus, I'll bring you the sad case of the day, the day I missed church, the first time in 25 years, because I was sick. It's a sad day, sad case. Your pastor was sick and had to skip church. Now, I'm telling you that because we've all done this. How many would say, you know, we just got busy and forgot to pray? Right? Life's busy, right? And so your pastor, I was busy. I mean, God had to correct me. He says, you've been busy. You've been distracted. A lot of things happening. And you know what? You didn't stop and pray. You ever said that before? Listen, we need to stop. Anyone say, we need to stop and pray? Stop what? When you say that, what do you mean? Stop what? Stop worrying, right? But by then it's too late. You see, when you say, look, we need to, come on, be honest. Anyone ever say that? We need to stop and pray in a situation? Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's good. But I'm telling you, you're, 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 you're late. Because when you say we have to stop and pray, stop what? Worrying. 
You see, at that point, typically, there's already a situation occurring, right? And you go, wait a minute, something's coming on. we got to stop because it's already it's, it's moving. we got to stop and pray. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. But we need to understand what Peter said. Be alert and on guard. Your enemy roams around. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.